Yeah. Right. I'm a pragmatist. You're a pragmatist. Congratulations. One convinced the sledge. It worked for a few feet. It's ZMS 2011 and uh, it's a wood run. prophesied hundreds of years ago through Native American sages and others that there would arise a tribe of two spirits upon Zuni land that would model a new world. And, um, and you think this is it? I'm not so tired and exhausted from carrying wood, yeah. When you're alone, to show you this sculpture produced by the finest artist in residence here at ZMS and that is Mother Nature. this is by accident or by design, is that of the major buildings, you can't see all of them from any particular vantage point. For example, from where I'm standing here, you can see the main building, the common house, the tool shed, the studio. In the distance, Juniper House, the outhouse, the chicken coop. But T. Roms is hidden behind the trees. The wind's picking up. Snow is predicted. No, no. <laughs> hey, Christian. Hey, tiny bear. So like Sarah Palin? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Quite spectacular. Now I'll get this.
such a different feel doing this in the winter versus the summer. Yeah. Traipsing in what, two feet of snow, one foot of snow? Six inches. Fresh snowy banks. And I'm not the only one with a video camera. I guess it's contagious, right? And what kind of hill is this? This is, uh, it's called Flat Top Hill. Tiny bear. Oh, my legs are burning. <laughs> my legs are burning, why? <clears throat> to climb. To climb. <laughs> so this is a turning point, apparently. This is where the tribes went through on their way from somewhere to somewhere else. That's what I hear stories of. Me too. It's a great location. You get a great view of just every beautiful mountainside around in the plateaus and mesas. It's breathtaking. Sort of what makes this place so special hey, can you know, be it, seen it, right here. Exactly. Right at this very spot. All in it. It's really... It's very calming and peaceful. It is. We're here on the set of the filming of a new movie that um, we're working on, and it's called Shroom Quest. And apparently, somewhere near this location, there were uh, several, several tons of psychedelic shrooms buried beneath the surface of the earth over 100 years ago. And there's a natural spring, hot spring, that's coming out of there. And if you drink this water, well, that's all we're going to cover right now. But you know the premise of the film and where we're going with this and uh, the fact that it could be based on a true story. It could. makes you want to stay hanging on every word. Wind's picking up, but it's still surprisingly mild here. It's fresh. My favorite. That's the one that still reminds me of Valley of Kings. Yeah. Have you been to Israel? Is that, oh, it's uh, Egypt, isn't Egypt. it? It's right over the air where it looks like a little, where well, there's water down there. Yes. But there are lava. They're like bookcases, 40 feet high of lava that's just fallen over each other with weeping willows and all that down in there. Really? It's amazing. It looks really close, but it's not. <laughs> it's almost, it's probably a mile. Yeah, probably. Where are those? Uh, yeah, capture where it's the kind of dark rock down. Pit and then all, step around that tree over there. It goes way <laughs> down. To your right. To my right. I might have you get the shot because I have no idea what I'm doing. But it's very pretty. Oh, I just pushed record. You weren't recording? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we have to do the whole thing again. Okay. Well, well, where are oh, you? You're kidding. Okay. Here we are, flat top hill. It's winter, but it's surprisingly warm. And I just feel at peace. Not one, I'm with the warmth of my friends here. I just see the clouds scudding across the sky, the trees dotted on the fields below, the snow on the ground, the redness of the rocks in the distance. I just learned that uh, the... You are at flat top hill? Yes. Named after the famous flat top mohawk, um, whose name is now lost in the midst of history. I just learned that this particular vista, you can't reach this from the open road. You can't reach this in a car or a motorcycle or a train. You have to get here on foot. So it's a hidden gem here in New Mexico. It's quite magical. It is. It makes it very special. It does. It makes it very special. <laughs> It is our own Valley of the Kings. Our very own Valley of the Kings. <laughs> and we queens are very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> yeah, when Willie was here, we went, walked way. Did you really? And it's like a creek that goes all the way down. Wow. And How I had wonderful. so much fun that day. How wonderful. How long were you out for? Uh, four or five hours. <laughs> Lovely. That's the way to do these things. It's, really? it's been really wonderful having people who've been around for so long come in through these months and, you know, hearing the stories and the things mm. like that. It's marvelous. What kind of stories do you have to share? Can you remember? Uh, Any come to mind? Well, the one that always sticks out is the one about the Zuni 
Indian man who came out when they were laying the foundation of the common house. Mm -hmm. And there was the prophecy in their culture and other Indian cultures about the uh, two spirits coming in that would heal their society. And he sat out there for several days before they talked, and that's when he told them of that, that prophecy. Now, and what is a two spirit? Uh, do you want to feel that one? <laughs> yeah, well, like it's twelve words or less for you know, people with attention deficit. The two spirit is someone whose true internal person transcends their physical gender expression. It can always incorporate and include that, but it transcends that. Mm -hmm. You may have someone who is an authentic female inside of a true male body and they are two spirit in the sense that they would embrace the fullness of the unity of their femininity and their masculinity in one entity almost like they've attained a balance a balance of the masculine and feminine so it's not just faggot no not at okay all. yeah okay what do you define faggot as, Steve? The true spirit. <laughs> well, why would you say that? That would, that would initially, to me, seem you know like a highly offensive term um, to describe. Are you homosexual? I I am. A, I hang out with homosexuals. Uh, yes, right. Yes. Do you consider yourself absolutely flaming homosexual? Oh, from time to time, I'm wearing a lime green scarf. After all, oh, okay. how gay is that? Oh, okay. Do you do you yeah, find the term yeah. faggot offensive? No, I don't actually. Mildly, you don't. Okay. I, I try to reclaim it. I. I I mean, to me, I was being a little pejorative. In, in, I mean, the true spirit versus faggot. Uh, a faggot is a man who has sex with other guys. A true spirit, I think, uh, is somebody who emb embodies both the feminine and the masculine and um, walks between two worlds. So, uh, how... Whether faggots walk between two worlds, some of them wish they did. I think so. I think so. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I do use the word faggot a little pejoratively. And I do think we need to aspire to being true spirits as opposed to just living life as faggots. Exactly. So maybe you're right. I think... Uh, it's a, it seems like an enlightenment. It's an enlightened faggot as mm -hmm. a true spirit. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Enough of the cheesy special effects. <laughs> This isn't Blair Witch. Project. This is not Blair Witch. That's right. That's right. Love about this particular time of year is that, uh, unlike last year, the amount of snow, it's precious. It's not too much of it. It's just about six inches, maybe less, would you say? Well, Christian? Maybe less. Yeah. So it's just enough, really, for... Uh, us to go traipsing through and uh, making footprints and uh, but not actually impeding our progress which is really wonderful it's Macy's snow it's here for our pleasure it's beautiful oh look there's a dead tree one oh, of the Volcanoes? Oh, way off in the distance. Yes. Okay. Big elk tracks are here at your feet. How do you recognize them as being elk tracks? They're the nose really that big. Ah. Uh, Not like right there, but over there. What? Over there. There? These guys? Yeah. Oh! Wow, it really helps actually being in nature with somebody who knows things about nature. Unless it's a cow. Unless it's a cow. If you say so. <laughs> That's my big thing. If you say so. Well, I would let you know you're very good at. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? At least it makes you think. That's right. We're giving you uh, narration. 
that's open to speculation, but <laughs> an interpretation. I volunteered without hesitation for the inspiration of your sojourn here. Oh, the nation. Flat Top Hill. That's right. Marvelous place. This is this twin hill to the west. Good. It's called Flat Top Hill. <laughs> and, was and it was built in 1873 by the Flat Top Brothers. Okay. Oh, you can feel the wind beginning to pick up, and there's damp in the air. Snow is coming. If it may see snow, days may be even numbered. And it's cold. This is why I'm here, is to basically keep in touch with nature. And this is what this place affords me, is the ability to get in touch with nature at my doorstep. It's magical here. That's an igloo? Well, it's a set lodge, but in the winter it can be a freeze lodge if you're into just being chill. True. There's the Relaxing pond it. to go do a dunk. There is that too, especially in the summer. It's beautiful for swimming in the summer, actually, the pond. If you don't mind the eels. Here's, here's the common house. We're back on ZMS property, aren't we? Yeah. And behind the sweat lodge is the pond. This is very inhabitable. Very inhabitable? Yeah. Does it smell? What was that? Oh, nothing. I was uh, just yeah. Okay. So that's Juniper House. I never knew it was so big. And they're on their way home. Questions. All right. Well, this All is right. my zuni moment. Okay. I normally hate doing washing, doing dishes, but here am I gladly doing dishes. And this is the view out of my kitchen window. By Wait, the way, are you doing dishes? I'm doing dishes. Yeah. Give us a demonstration. Okay. Let's go in front. There we go. This is the hotter one, actually, and it gives me a chance to really. You see, what I love about zuni is it makes me, it gives me a chance to repurpose what these things I normally don't like. In some respects, this is something I'm now loving because I'm now realizing I can use this for a person, the loving. purpose of meditation and thought. Oh my God, this is the view from your window. This, this is, is the, the view dish. when you're washing dishes. So when you're back in San Francisco and you're washing dishes, you could visualize this. And all the thoughts that go through your head then are like the thoughts that go through my head now. <laughs> okay. So that's my zuni moment. That's nice you. Thank you, Christian, for doing the camera work. Boy, is this water cold? The water, cold water is very cold. The hot water is exceedingly hot. I love the fact you got three sinks. Okay. 
Are you just recording? You're just going to put my tape. Baby, this is going to be a keeper. What? This is going to be a keeper. Why, what are you little taping? Oh, you're going to be amazed at what you're seeing as you're able to do, as you're here doing dishes. Okay. When you review this, just mm -hmm. maybe one last shot. All right. But we're just getting, you know, the view from the dish pan. Right. This okay. This, this is, is the bad view of town, man. All right. This is what the washerwoman sees. Is this this the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is this, what you have to yeah. put up with. Right. It's very simple. In sanctuary life. To and do there's dishes. the much. The creation of the universe. Okay. We're gonna roll back now. Okay. I'm almost done here. So. install a dishwasher who needs one <laughs> you know you got a view that's what we created you for <laughs> oh ouch <laughs> and you think you're leaving in a couple days <laughs> i would be honored and humbled to do the job <laughs> i'm on taste of being there okay Take a dive. 